Um, thank you, Jan Corla. I really appreciate the passion that Deputy Wallace has, has for this bill. I would like to thank him for having the courage to speak up for the women and men whose lives are forever changed upon receiving <clears throat> a diagnosis of a fatal fetal abnormality. <clears throat> this is a topic that is, excuse me, sorry, very close to my heart. My husband and I were unfortunate enough to be told our much wanted child had a profound defect when we went for our 20 week scan. The pain and suffering of that time is deeply etched in my memory. And the fear of the unknown and the cruelty of fate weighed heavily upon our shoulders. Against the odds, the pregnancy continued to term and I was delivered of a child that had almost the entirety of his organs outside his body. He is now miraculously a fit and healthy five-year-old with a flair for social commentary. That week where we awaited the results to tell us if he also had a genetic and therefore fatal abnormality was the hardest of our young lives. Before that, I had not needed to pay much attention to the Eighth Amendment, nor had I been overly aware of the limitations it placed on the Irish people. Call me ignorant, but it had never been on my radar until that point, having spent most of my adult life in the UK, where their civilised and compassionate approach to women's health is par for the course. Arising from that personal experience, I have become a more educated, open-minded and informed person, and I hope representative. It should not be the case that every member of this House should have to suffer, as my husband and I did, in order to speak for a repeal of the Eighth Amendment. I wouldn't wish what we went through on anyone. And having met with representatives from termination for medical reasons, I know they also want to limit the suffering of the people who will face the same situation. <clears throat> Today, as we sit here, people are receiving a diagnosis that tells them to prepare for a death, not a birth, and that their misery cannot be relieved in our own country. The inordinate amount of political anxiety that surrounds the repealing of the Eighth Amendment is understandable. But it takes courage to stand up for what is right, to meet with the people who have lived the experience, and to listen to the medical experts, and not some self-appointed moral police who will look down on the rest of us from their lofty perches terrorising TDs with threats of hellfire and eternal damnation in the hope that this will cause the political paralysis. This is not going to work. We as legislators need to acknowledge that change is happening, the people are calling for it and the international community demands it. It is incumbent on us to vote down this legislation when we are informed that it is unconstitutional. As legal advisor to the government, the AG has made her opinion clear. I understand that legal opinions may differ, but the Attorney General is who we turn to for legal guidance, and to ignore her professional opinion would be to do her a disservice. As well as caring for our women, I believe we must act to protect our medical professionals. The bill does not prescribe what constitutes a fatal fetal abnormality. There is no definition for the term incompatible with life. And while the Eighth Amendment remains in situ, it presents a barrier to those practicing medicine who wish to have clarity regarding care. I have spoken before of my support for a referendum being called and ask 
to be, to be called and to ask this generation of Irish people what they want to do with the Eighth Amendment. I believe that a repeal would be in the best interest of the people and when it, the time comes for us to canvass, I will travel the length and breadth of the country asking people to support a repeal. The Citizens' Convention, which will be established shortly, will be comprised of men and women from all over the country, of all ages and backgrounds. And I hope that the process will be executed in a timely and efficient manner and will ultimately lead to a repeal of the Eighth Amendment. By muddying the waters around the Eighth with bills such as this, we risk negatively affecting future campaigns where clear and unequivocal questions can be put to the Irish people. Thank you, Count